Greek Spanish saint at the time of St. Teresa of Avila. But we're saying the Mass today, but if you're back at Phoenix, we're saying the Mass today, it would have been the Mass or yesterday, which is the feast of St. Luke, so the evangelist, so that Mass was suppressed by the Sunday after Pentecost, the 20th Sunday. But uh, so the Mass would have been the Mass of yesterday, the Mass of uh, St. Luke. We'll read the, the gospel of the Mass only to stand for the gospel. We'll read just the gospel. We'll just take that according to St. Luke, on the feast of St. Luke, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them forth two by two before him into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to him, to them, The harvest indeed is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into this harvest. Go, behold, I send you forth as lambs in the midst of wolves. They carry forth, carry neither purse nor wallet nor sandals, and greet no one upon the way. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they have. For the laborer deserves as worthy of his hire. Do not go from house to house. Whatever town you enter into, and they receive you, eat what is set before you. And cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God and eh, eh, as at hand for you. That's why the words of the days of the Holy Gospel. Mm -hmm. And today, for your consideration, uh, uh, those two men. What will be the feast of St. Luke? St. Luke is one of the four evangelists. The four, the four evangelists, you have four Gospels. They are four real men who walked with Jesus Christ, who were reporters. They were witnesses that saw Jesus Christ in his life. They witnessed what he did historically, and they wrote down what they saw. They're historians and reporters of facts. If you'll notice in the Gospel, like St. Luke's Gospel, just like the other Gospels, the gospel is not written in such a way as to say Jesus Christ is good and Pharisees are bad and the Sadducees are bad and you should follow Christ. All it says is Jesus Christ was born. This is what he taught. This is what he did. And these, these are his words. They, he performed many miracles. These are the miracles that we witnessed. He died and he rose from the dead. And he sent his apostles to go out in the world to bring Christ to the end. The sacred scripture, the Bible, it is first and foremost a history book. It's a book of history. That is, what is it that, that this, this book teaches? That what Jesus Christ did. What matters to us is reality. Reality. And this is what is uh, one of the great tragedies of the world today is that modern man lives in a fiction. Modern man lives in a fake world. It's not real. That's why he has TV and he has internet and he has all the things on his cell phone, but he doesn't live in a real world. He lives inside of a screen. He lives inside of fiction. Whereas the real world has the sun in it, it has the weather, it has the trees, it has the rocks, it has God. God makes this whole world hold together. And what matters is what happens in the real world. What really happened? And St. Luke is a witness. He was a witness of what happened. He was one of the 72 disciples. And he was there when Jesus Christ was crucified. He was confused. He was worried. He, didn't, he was disturbed. He didn't know that he would ever see Jesus Christ again. But he watched him be 
scourged. He watched him be crowned with thorns. He watched him be brought to crucifixion. He heard the words of Pilate saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. And then, and then he heard Caiaphas and the Jews say, let his blood be upon us, upon our children. He heard all the words and, they, and he, he witnessed that which happened. Then he spoke to the mother of God and he asked, well, what happened in the childhood of this child? I only met him when he was 30 years old. What happened when he was a baby? And the Blessed Virgin Mary told him what happened when he was a baby. But the angel Gabriel came and appeared to her and that she conceived by the Holy Ghost. And the baby was born in Bethlehem and then had to flee to Egypt. And she went and spoke with, the, with her cousin Elizabeth and sang the Magnificat and, her, and heard the, the, the Benedictus sung by Zachary. And these words are written in the Gospel of St. Luke. What happened? You know that whenever we are going to find out history, what do we do? We go to the eyewitnesses and we say, what happened? And write down what they say happened. Some of the things are good. Some of the things are bad. Luke was not a hero on the day of Good Friday. He was a coward. He was afraid. He didn't believe in the resurrection. But he was there. He was in that crowd, and he saw Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. He heard the words of Christ that he spoke from the cross. He wrote down that which he saw. And he is an evangelist. He tells the gospel. What is this gospel? The gospel means good news. You know, the word news comes from four English letters. N-E-W-S. N means north, E, east, W, west, and S, south. The news equals whatever happened in the old days. Remember, the farmers would come by. they walk by your house, and you say, what happened? Well, in the north, this happened. Another man would come by and say, well, in the east, this happened. Another man came and said, well, in the west, this happened. Another one said, well, in the south, that happened, and that's the news. Whatever happens in the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, that's the news. The historical things that happen, these are the news. And when you have the news, when you know what happened, north, east, west, and south, you don't have all the news if you only know what happened in the north and the west, but not the east and the south. So to have all the news, we must know what happened in the north, what happened in the east, what happened in the west, what happened in the south. And there is good news. Because the good news is that Jesus Christ, that man that walked the earth 2,000 years ago, and that Luke laid his eyes on, Luke, the St. Luke, who was a doctor. And he being a doctor, when he wrote down the gospel, he noted things about the crucifixion that the others didn't notice. He noticed because of the doctor, he would use medical terms when he talked about the sufferings of Christ. He also used medical terminology when he spoke about some of the miracles. This man had the dropsy, and he spoke of, and he spoke as a doctor. He could see the, what had happened, and he wrote down according to his knowledge as a doctor. He wrote down historical events. The gospel is a history book. It is true history written by a man that was a real witness who writes true facts and tells us the news. What really happened in the north? What really happened in the east? What really happened in the west? What happened in the south? The south is where comes divine things. The east is where Christ rose from the dead and we will come to judge. The west is the place of death and judgment when we all go to death. And the north is the place of material things. And God must be in the north, in our possessions. He must be in the south, and our prayers and our divine thoughts. He must be in the east, which is part of the light and life comes from, and he must be in the west, so that we are traveling to him as we go to death. And hence, the good news is given to us by one of the great evangelists, St. Luke. And so yesterday was his feast day. We were suppressed because it was a Sunday. But St. Luke is a true witness, and he was also prophesied in the Old Testament that there are four great uh, uh, creatures, and the creatures only go forward, and they never go backwards, and they have four faces upon them. And the one is the face of a man, and they have a face of an, uh, of, of a, uh, an ox, and the face of a lion, and the face of an eagle. And these four faces are the face of the Gospels, of the evangelists. And St. Luke is the ox, 
St. Luke is the ox. He is the one that, that carries the plow. He is the one that drags the plow. The lion is a great fighter. The eagle flies very high. And the man, the man, he is very reasonable, very rational, and he works. St. Matthew is the man. St. Mark is the, Luke, is, is the lion. It was who God gave us the gospel from St. Peter. And then St. John is the eagle that flies above all. But the ox that carries the plow, that plows the dirt, that makes it possible for things to grow, is St. Luke. And he is the oxen who carries the plow, that gives us life in a special way, because he gives us the means by which the dirt is tilled, and that is the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Luke gives us the Gospel of Mary. He is the one who spoke to her about the childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he included that childhood. He, well, he knew Jesus Christ when he was 30, but what was he like when he was a baby? What happened when this child was born? It's very important for all of us to know. And therefore, he went to the mother of God, and he asked her, what happened when this baby was born? Let me write it down in my gospel. And so he did. And so St. Luke is the evangelist who tells us about the childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and especially the words that come from Mary. And the Blessed Virgin Mary, she's the one that plows the dirt. The oxen, he plows. The oxen, you see a lion, you might be afraid. You see a man, you don't know what he's going to do. He may judge you. You see an eagle, he flies high and has many prey. But the oxen, he just carries the plow. The oxen is a threat to no man, but the oxen is so important. You walk by an ox and you see this little gentle creature, he is big. But he's gentle, and the ox carries a plow, which makes it possible for us to eat. And so St. Luke is the gentle, the healing of the four evangelists. He's the one that gives us medicine. He's the one that makes it possible that we can, we can dig the dirt of the life of Jesus Christ, and out will come fruit, and out will come food that will feed us. We are going to follow the oxen. We may be afraid of the lion. We may not understand the eagle. And the man, we don't know. But the oxen is always safely followed because he gives us food and he sustains us and he is a threat to no one. And he is a doctor. Though so St. Luke is one of the great evangelists, he was also the disciple of St. Paul. He wrote another book called The Acts of the Apostles in which he traveled to St. Paul and wrote about all the things that St. Paul did in the early history of the church. He is a reporter, He's an historian, he wrote the divine truth, and he was a doctor, and he gave us the good news by which we know the truth about what really happens in the north, or really happens in the east, or really happens in the west, and what really happens in the south. He is most sacred, and therefore most important to us, and we are very grateful to St. Luke. He gave us the words that we say every day in the Holy Bravery, the Benedictus, the blessed be the name of the Lord God, and that was sung by Zachary the priest. And the Magnitica, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and thy spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he that is mighty has done great things unto me, and holy is his name. These words of Mary are on the lips of us every day. St. Luke the doctor gave us these healing words, and he gave us the beautiful truth about what really happened in the childhood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was there at the crucifixion and saw that he was truly dead. He was a medical witness of the true death of Jesus Christ. He saw that he really rose from the dead. He saw him with his own eyes. He touched his body with his own hands after he rose from the dead. And he was there on the day of the ascension when our Lord Jesus Christ rose up into heaven. And he was a witness of the very great miracles of the early part of the church. He walked with the greatest of all the apostles, St. Paul. And he was a disciple of St. Paul. And he learned the wisdom and the love of St. Paul. And he wrote it down in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. So we owe very much to Luke. Now every word that St. Luke wrote, he used his mind. He used his own heart. He wrote with his own knowledge what he could remember. And the Holy Ghost was in every word that he wrote. So the Holy Ghost wrote every single word that came out of the hand of St. Luke in the Gospel of St. Luke. And he wrote, and the Holy Ghost wrote every single word that came on the hand of St. Luke when he wrote the Acts of the Apostles. So that the Acts of the Apostles have Luke, St. Luke, as their human author. And he did write with his own mind and heart based upon what he saw with his own eyes. 
and Herb with his own ears. But Luke is not the author of St. Luke. And Luke is not the author of the Acts of the Apostles, except as a human instrument, the author that wrote every word and inspired the hand and the heart of St. Luke was the Holy Ghost. So that every word that he wrote, he rightly understood. He willed faithfully to write down those things and only those things that were inspired him to write by the Holy Ghost. And this is called divine inspiration. He was truly inspired. We can be inspired to do good things, but Luke, St. Luke, was inspired in such a way that every word he wrote in his gospel and every word he wrote in his epistle, the Acts of the Apostles, every word he wrote was written by God through him only as an instrument so that every single word was from God. And we believe every word contained in the gospel of St. Luke as true and infallible and inerrant historical and theological fact that everything there is written because God wrote these words through the eyes, through the heart, through the mind, through the hands of St. Luke. And he wrote the words of the Acts of the Apostles through him as well. And hence he is the oxen that carries us, the faith dug in the ground by that plow and that dirt that is tilled so that we can eat food and subside in this life comes from the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is the evangelist of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the evangelist that is the doctor, the evangelist that is the oxen, the evangelist that wrote true history with great intelligence and wisdom and was not at all fooled by any kind of foolishness. He could not be deceived, and he was not deceived, and he wrote down the true word of God. His gospel is the third gospel. St. Matthew wrote his gospel first, St. Mark wrote his gospel second, and St. Luke wrote his gospel third in the, in the sometime in the 50s A.D., only 20 years after Jesus Christ was crucified. He wrote his gospel, and the final gospel was written by St. John. Hence his gospel is the third of the four gospels, because he wrote it down third in time. And he wrote down what he saw, and what he witnessed, and what he saw, what he witnessed, and what he wrote is infallibly and inerrantly true, and it holds us in our church together until this very day, and shall hold us together until the end of times. So that we all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.